So I suppose I should start with 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 two notes of of apology. Um, first of all, if if you see that my voice is not as enthusiastic as it normally is when I talk about these matters, please remember that I have a a bit of a nasty cold, and that is essentially making not making me not sound as 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 enthusiastic as as I normally am. My, my second note of apology um, um, is because. Um, the 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 remit that I was I was given is is essentially to provide a a, a fifteen minutes presentation to an educated lay audience. Um, um, be, be, because of that, I've made a, a, a decision on purpose to not not to present you the very specific details of my research, but present you the whole area a little bit more more in general. And for for a lay audience, I hope I've I've uh, I've 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 taken the right the right decision. Um, but very briefly, when we talk about artificial intelligence applied to to pathology, the first question is applied to what? And and in in some ways, tissue pathology is the analysis of of organs or or tissues or or cells um, to diagnose, to prognosticate, or to decide on therapeutic intervention. And typically, when a sample comes to pathology for diagnostic analysis, it may come as a whole organ. Um, we make sure that we can look at the histological detail of that of that um, uh, the, the disease, the way the cells are beginning, as you can see, to organize themselves in 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 tissues. We can look at the single uh, cell level because that gives us also very significant information that we hope our artificial intelligence tools will be able to detect as well. And finally, we try to extract the nucleic acids from, from those cells, either um, DNA or RNA, to, to get significantly more information that can help us making a better diagnosis or, or decide on a better treatment. So of all these four levels, organ, TCU, cell, and molecular. I'm going to discuss today very briefly digital pathology and artificial intelligence applied to this central area, to the recognition of tissues and the recognition of cells. So how has this changed over the last few years? It has changed in a very significant way uh, for, for a century, if not more, uh, the way we interpreted these tissues to, to help patients was very much with the help of a microscope. So we look at an image. We are trained after five, seven years of training to identify what the shapes of those cells, the different organization is telling us, and we try to make them a, a, an, an informed opinion that will help the patients better. What we are doing more recently is instead of taking that image directly from the microscope, we actually create a digital image, an electronic image of the same material. And this is key because as you can see, that image is not an image anymore, it's also a large collection of complex information that would allow us then to start interrogating that tissue in a totally different way. In other words, the digitization of pathology, which is happening now in many pathology laboratories across the country, the transfer from the microscope into the in silico images is allowing us to make more accurate diagnosis, diagnosis that is more reproducible, um, to have better laboratory accountability of how we are moving things in, in, in the routine, a better turnaround time. We think that for some of these samples, we are providing our patients with, with, with more, um, 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 with, 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 with faster uh, diagnosis. In the long term, it's more af affordable. And as you can see, it allows accessibility for second opinions. And very important, the lesson that we've learned through the COVID, COVID crisis it also allows for more working, allowing, uh, uh, again, a much better diagnosis. But as I said, 
these images are not only an image anymore, are also a repository of extraordinary information that the naked eye, the, the human naked eye, can only understand to a certain extent. So this is what we are used to see. This is a first layer of analysis of how digital pathology can begin to see, as you can see, different cell types that are beginning to tell us different things about the ecosystem of that cancer. If you take this into an extreme model in which you begin to interrogate each individual cells with many different biomarkers, what you have, as you can see, is a degree of complexity like we have never dreamt before in, 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 in diagnosis of, of cancer um, um, to, 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 to date. How do we make the most of this information would pro probably dictate the way um, a tissue pathology is going to move forward over the next few years or the next few decades. And, and, and it's important to put this in a broader context. What we are saying is that we are making sense of pathological images. You have heard in the previous discussion a wonderful analysis of of, of, of more broader clinical imaging, radiology as well. We can apply artificial intelligence to genomics and many other uh, molecular analysis of, of cancer. We can apply artificial intelligence to our clinical records or even to behavioral data that are associated with that patient. And we can even put the information of that patient into a much broader paradigm and look at population big data and, and how that may help uh, um, our, our patients individually or, or, or as a group. This is in many ways the promise of artificial intelligence. And what us and many others are trying to do is to make sure that this helps in preventing cancer and preventing diseases, in understanding the predisposition that we have for that, the diagnostic interpretation or the diagnostic therape therapeutics, and obviously begin to solve problems that are going beyond the individual patient. How is it helping pathologists immediately? For instance, in many ways, one of the things pathologists do today with their traditional microscopes is the staging of cancer. How involved the lymph nodes are is going to dictate a totally different prognosis and a totally different treatment for our patients. And what we can do, once again, is transform the traditional images that we are looking today into new digital images where we are beginning to see that we can help the pathologist in detecting information in a way that is more accurate than just the visual analysis through a microscope. We can look at those biomarkers that we are using today to decide which patient is going to receive which treatment. And instead of scoring them and analyzing them in a totally subjective way, we can ask the machines to look at that image, to look at that signal and give us extremely quantitative data that are significantly more reproducible. And as you can imagine, significantly more, more accurate as well. We can start predicting things from an image that until now we had to do with a very convoluted mechanism. So if we want to start with a tissue and we want to end up with genomic information, the way we do it today is through very complex processes that involve quite a significant degree of, of, of complex te technology in a process that can take days, if not weeks, to generate the information that we want. We are applying artificial intelligence today to the, those images in the hope that will allow us to predict the molecular basis of that disease in a way that is as accurate as least as our molecular analysis and with a turnaround time of minutes or hours instead of days and weeks. And 
we can begin to get a level of complexity that we've never seen before. I told you earlier on that we have now technologies to look at each of those individual cells and identify biomarkers that are associated with that individual cell. But we can go farther than that and we can begin to understand the whole ecosystem of that kind of cancer, how the different cells begin to relate to each other and begin to give us information about the intercellular relations that we've never seen before and that indeed we see are beginning to have a strong clinical information. And this poses questions to the patients and questions to the, to the clinicians. For instance, we are beginning to identify very relevant tools with artificial intelligence that we know are clinically meaningful, but we don't know how to explain. Would we as patients, would we be happy of being diagnosed being treated based on information that comes from an int artificial intelligence, from a black box, giving us a result through a process that we cannot even begin to understand. And the other thing that this is doing is transforming the way we look at clinical trials as well. Remember, in clinical trials, we try to see two different groups of patients, one with a standard of care, one with a new treatment. We evaluate that treatment. And then we start trying to identify a traditional diagnostic tool that only then we start bringing into an artificial intelligence mode. And what us and others are saying is that perhaps we should cut this process and go directly into artificial intelligence tools that will be more accurate and it will be more easy and more reproducible to identify. It's very clear that machine learning, that artificial intelligence holds a great process, but us in the business world, we are still in the infancy of how we can identify and use that for clinical purposes for our patients. But what is very clear to me, and I will finish with this, is that we are seeing another revolution in science and in medicine. A few years ago, at the beginning of last century, beginning of this century, we brought the molecular revolution, the genome and how that is helping our, our, our patients. We have seen a digital revolution. We are moving our information in a totally different way. I would like to argue that we are beginning to see another revolution, the revolution in how we are making sense of that huge complexity of data to bring new, new biomarkers that are going to help our patients. And with that, I would like to stop apologizing again for my voice and thanking you very much for your attention.